Folks, are you ready? Are you ready for Bernie Watch? The first Bernie Watch. Are you ready for it? Because it's happening live right now. From this point, I don't, I don't, I don't have a show, you know. But from this point until Bernie Sanders is in the Oval Office, maybe I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I will be dedicating a section of every single politics stream to updates on the presidential election, starting with the Democratic primary. We're going to keep up with the news. We're going to keep up with the with the spicy drama, my friends. I do this for you. I'll be releasing these every single time I do with single segments. I don't know, maybe if I think like maybe a segment's super big, I should release it separately or something. I have no idea. Folks, Bernie Watch, February 1st. Let's get started, my friends. Who here has been on Twitter? If you haven't been on Twitter, who here is incredibly lucky to have not been subjected to this discourse? My friends, check it out as soon as I move my webcam down because this is where I go for the, for the, Hol the Hollow Knight stream. Stumbling over my words because I'm just so excited to be shilling for Bernie. Bernie Sanders. Week when someone by the name of Hillary Clinton said that nobody, we're not going to boo, we're not going to boo. We're classy here. No, we're no, classy. I'll boo. Boo. You all know I can't be quiet. No, we're gonna boo. That's all right. The haters, the haters will shut up on Monday when we win. There we go. I was gonna say a haters week. For those of you without context, this is from a Bernie Sanders uh, uh, rally in Iowa, as you all know, uh, uh, on Monday. In just holy shit, I'm gonna lose my fucking mind. Two days. The Iowa caucus comes out. The first caucus we're going to see. And folks, by the way, oh man, oh god, I'm on. I've been. I just think about this all day now. We are like we are on the fucking cusp. There will be no more polls. Bernie is currently leading by three point six points over Biden. It's a four way shot between Warren Buttigieg, Biden, and Sanders. If you are in Iowa right now, you need to be volunteering. You need to be volunteering. This is an insanely important moment. This is unbelievably important, folks. Okay? So we're up there, you know, and, and that's and that's what they're doing right over here, you know. That's what they're doing. They're over here um, at an Iowa rally. And um, what does a point represent here? A percentile, like, representative, like, slice the pie. 22 means 22% 22 of the pie, basically. That's the system. And... We have this, we have this, you know, this rally that's going on right here. And Rashida, um, you're going to have to help me a little bit with the, uh, with the last name here. T Tlaib? I, I, I fuck this up. I do this every time. Tlaib? Tlaib? Can I, if, if, if you guys, Tlaib? Tlaib? Talib. Talib. Okay, gotcha. Rashida Talib. That sounds so much easier to pronounce than it looks like it does. Rashida Talib led the crowd in booing Hillary Clinton. Now, if you guys will recall, if you will, if you will recollect, Hillary Clinton was responsible for recently saying nobody likes Bernie Sanders, nobody likes him, you know career politician again i've talked about this before the salient irony of hillary fucking clinton saying nobody likes her and that you're a career politician blah 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 insult insult okay just in insane you know but so so hillary clinton who's not in this race has issued direct condemnation of bernie sanders presumably bitterness you know sad you know and um and rashida talib sort of you, you know makes manifest this through through the crowd brewing now Guys, uh, uh, Hillary slash uh, K-Hive Twitter is, is, is not happy with this. Not even remotely happy. Let's take a look at the discourse. So Hassan agrees. This is absolutely based. Thank you, Hassan. I really appreciate that. And I agree completely. This is horrific. Keep in mind, all that happened was them booing Hillary Clinton, somebody who isn't in this race, somebody who just issued direct, unprompted, and false attacks against Bernie Sanders. This is horrific. I can no longer support Rashida Tlaib. I honestly thought she was at least better than this. As for the Bernie crowd booing Hillary, they only boo the best people. Obama, Hillary, John Lewis, etc. They cheer racists, homophobes, and... 
misgoinists, apparently. I'm going to I'm going to assume that's exactly what they mean. So this person obviously, in addition to being a giant cuck and a baby, um makes no point whatsoever. So just like a MAGA rally then, do they also chant lock her up? Remember folks, criticizing Hillary Clinton or booing her after she makes direct attacks against your candidate makes you a Trump supporter. Did they also chant lock her up? How deeply disappointing witnessing Democrats behaving like Trump. Remember what I said about the, the aesthetics of progressivism? So to them, to them, progressive is not booing a woman. And, and, and progressive is getting a woman in office, but not supporting Bernie Sanders, the most progressive presidential candidate in the history of the United States of America, mainstream progressive candidate in the history of the United States of America. Only one campaign acts like this. Insulting 65 million voters must be a strategy I missed in the 30 years I've been covering politics. 30 years I've been co Shut the fuck up, lady. Who are you? Award-winning investigative journalist from Huffington Post. <laughs> ah! Ah. Hey, you know what they say about... You know what they say about the Huffington Post's, uh, uh, you know, approach towards, uh, approach towards diversity, you know? If, if there's... Hey, if you can't trust the future of the country to the squad over here, you know, then, then who can you trust it to, honestly? Uh, you know, where else are you going to go? Think about it. Writes books. Socialist. Socialist? Oh, God. And she... This is a tweet? From 2014. From six years ago. Hashtag courage is a value. We should all adopt it. Why? Because being hashtag brave gets stuff done. Being brave inspires others to get stuff done. Hashtag justice. Damn! Holy shit! Ah! Oh my god, I'm fucking, I'm epiphanying so hard my yoni eggs are about to pop out, dude. Holy shit. Bravery. What we need leading this country. Let's get back to how booing Hillary Clinton after she makes direct attacks against your candidate makes you a Trump supporter. May I remind you that Secretary Clinton stood up for you against the White House squatter, and this is how you repay her? Blind devotion to any one candidate is unhealthy. Look, this all these fucking n n wonks care about is loyalty. That's it. Hillary Clinton is the Democratic woman, so you have to support her or you're Trump. She stood up for you one time. This is how you repay her? There's no there's no broader ideological, like, a, a guideline that drives their behavior. It's just loyalty to the party. Rashida Tlaib, Rashida Tlaib. No one needs this right now. My God, Democrats are their own worst enemy sometimes. Quit acting like what we're trying to get rid of. What the fuck does this mean? Do they think that like the problem with the Trump presidency is that Trump booed Hillary? I think that's it. That's what they think. To them, the problem with Trump isn't the fascism or the white supremacy or the camps at the border or the Muslim ban. All they care, to, to them, the greatest offense that Trump committed against the the country was disrespecting Queen Hilla. That's it. Well, that was horrible. I donated these thin-skinned bitches. But it's just booing. It's just booing. That's it. Holy shit. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. White feminists in the replies be like, yeah, no, that's good. I, you know, we, I stand this, I stand this tweet. I'm, I'm here for it. Good grief. Can we please stop this circle firing squad BS? And I mean it from all sides. Hillary Clinton in an inch. Hillary Clinton is currently pushing to get her failure of a life put into a fucking four hour Hulu biopic. And she took time out of her day to not only say that nobody likes Bernie Sanders, which by the way, when Hillary Clinton says nobody likes Bernie Sanders, what she means is that none, none of the plutocrats and career politicians on, 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 you know, in Washington like Bernie Sanders because he has principles. Of course they don't like him, but that's the only people Hillary Clinton gives a shit about. So that's where her consideration for people begins and ends. Hillary Clinton then went on to say she didn't know if she would endorse 
Bernie Sanders if he ended up being the primary delegate, the, the primary nominee. And then a fan, a supporter of Sanders leads a crowd booing. Oh, oh, the, 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 the heat coming from both sides is too much. God, For, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton directly impugning one of the leading candidates and a rally where she got booed after she did that. That is the, and keep in mind again, Bernie Sanders did 37, 37 campaign rallies for Hillary Clinton back in 2016. After Hillary beat Bernie in the primary, Bernie stepped up to try and get his fucking boys to vote for Hillary Clinton. And, and he campaigned for her, this old man campaigning for a candidate he ran against. When Hillary lost to Obama in 2008, she did 13 events at like what? 30 years younger than Bernie Sanders and much less ideological difference between them two? The duplicitous Clinton. Rashida Tlaib is just a low-class liberal version of MAGA. So here's a question. What does this mean if not racism? Low class. Can somebody explain to me what that means? Is it because she's brown? Because this is literally just... Her in a room leading booze. But she said, unite against Trump in, for some reason, the Jew brackets, says low-class liberal version of MAGA. I don't know what a liberal version of MAGA is, but a low-class version of MAGA kind of implies that this is, like, worse than MAGA or something like that. So what does that mean? I, like, this is this is literally just dog whistling, isn't it? It's, this is dog whistling, is it not? I've been seeing this all over Twitter. It's all of these, it's all of these insane, these crazy K hive, like they're the, the Warrenites, the liberal. They literally have no principles other than a loyalty to the party. That's one, um, and B, uh, the belief again that, that that labial flaps should be ground into the the chair of the Oval Office. That's it. That's literally it. That's where it begins and ends for them. So if a woman gets into office, it doesn't matter. I swear to God, these stupid fuckers would vote for Sarah Palin if Sarah Palin ran a ticket for the Republican side. Um, it's 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 crazy to me. Yeah, Neera Tandon. Neera, Neera Tandon, by the way, is, is one of, just one of the worst people in politics, um, unquestionably. Neera Tandon is is a is a is a uh, a homunculus who was designed by ancient cultic wizards to create a representation of feminism so abjectly, abhorrently um, uh, uh, antithetical to the principles of like egalitarianism that, uh, that the internal contradictions would actually fuel a sort of uh, uh, self-perpetuating engine, a fire beating in her chest. Uh, uh, Neera Tandon has been like front and center for this particular like, like kerfuffle. Here we can go down here. What was this 11,000? Yeah, 12,000 kind of uh, responses. This is going to get them real mad. This is they're, this is mansplaining to, to these people. This is good. Here, wait, I, I saw this on Twitter, you know. This makes me sad. And frankly, the audience response painfully reminds me of the lock her up chants at the Dem convention in 2016. Maybe Hillary should stop publicly criticizing one of the Dem frontrunners in the interest of party unity. Just an idea. So you're saying she deserves it? Yes. 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 Yeah! Yeah, Hillary Clinton deserves this and worse. Hillary Clinton does not care whether or not a Democrat wins. Hillary Clinton just doesn't want her legacy of failure to be despoiled by having her being beaten by the person she knew she had to cheat to win against in 2016. That's it. 
That's the answer. Hillary Clinton is and always has been a cancer on politics, but she's grown more bitter with age. Uh, so anyway, yeah, if you see any of this Rashida Tlaib, whatever, this is a nothing, absolutely nothing. She has every right to lead a crowd booing people against the, the person, the, not even a candidate, mind you, who shit-talked one of their, um, the, the, one of the leading candidates, and also the person they're currently there at a rally to support. Fuck Hillary Clinton. Oh, and one other thing, by the way, also very, very important. Hillary Clinton, hating Hillary Clinton is a wedge issue that we can use to bring right-leaning voters over. If you actually cared about winning, you would advocate in favor of trashing Hillary Clinton. Because Trump supporters hate Hillary Clinton. Republicans hate Hillary Clinton. Everyone hates Hillary Clinton. If you make fun of Hillary Clinton, you can pull people over from the right. Nothing alienates right-leaning voters more than seeing these fucking zombie voters who are still clinging to the legacy of Hillary Clinton in 2020, where she's not even a candidate. If we actually gave a single shit about electability here, then we would recognize that trashing Hillary Clinton is actually, in fact, a pretty phenomenal campaign strategy moving forward. Because it's going to get people, you know... Um, it's going to get people on board with, with the Democratic platform. Uh, hey, you know, I'm not a fan of the Democratic platform, but I'll tell you, I'm in favor of a Democratic platform that hates Hillary Clinton. That, that brings me closer to loving it, you know? That moves me over, without question. Now, later, unfortunately, Rashida Tlaib did apologize, because you have to, this in this environment, you know? Though I have to say, I really do wonder if we could move forward with not apologizing, you know? I don't like the backing down. I, I didn't like it when Ilhan Omar did it either. Um, I, um, you know, I, I, I just, I, I feel like, I feel like at this point you lose more for the weakness than you gain from the people who don't, who, who, who demanded the apology to begin with. My girlfriend is dead now. She did too many chores and she's gone. Anyway, I'm happy to say that's not the only fucking nonsense that's taken place since the last time we talked about the convention because DNC members discuss rules change to stop Sanders at a convention. Folks, are you ready to hear about how the Democratic primaries work? Are you ready? Are you ready? Because we're getting into it with a paint stream. I imagine most of you don't know how it works because all of you are dumb and babies, but I'm here to explain to you and you're welcome. Thank you. So let's get into it. Clip Studio Paint, load. Clip Studio Paint, load. There we go. Always takes a bit with the art programs, you know? There we go. All right, folks. Now stick with me here, okay? So. There are two elections. One election is the general, obviously. It's going to be one candidate against one candidate. I mean, for real. Like, there are going to be third parties and stuff, but that's probably going to be Biden or Bernie or whatever against Trump. Great. But before that, we have to decide who the Democrats are fielding. And for that, we have the Democratic primaries. Now, as many of you know, in two days, we have the um, Iowa... Um, we have the, uh, the, the Iowa um, caucus, which will be when we do the first ballot for the, the, the people's votes, um, to which candidate they prefer. Now, we just took a look at RCPs. For the, for the sake of consistency, let's take a look at 538's um, Iowa caucus uh, records as well. Wait, Iowa polls this year? Yeah, give me a... Nope. Where are 538's records on the Iowa uh, caucus? Here we go. No, these are just posts. Listen, if I can't find the information that I'm looking for in a two-minute Google search, then honestly, what's even the point? RCP. Here we go. Ah, chat has found it for me. Lovely. All right, what do we got here? Sanders is forecasted to win an average of 28% of the vote in Iowa. In 80% of simulations, he wins between 12% and 43% of the vote. He has a two in five chance of winning the most votes, slightly better than the second most likely winner, Biden, who has a one in three chance. So um, 538 is still prioritizing Biden over uh, Bernie Sanders. Though, um, from if I recall correctly, um, 538 prioritizes earlier polls more than, um, 
more than um, RCP does. But over here in RCP, which by the way, much prettier graph, I have to say. Sanders is still on top. Now, a two-fifths is better than one-third. Oh, wait. Sorry, wait, my bad. I misread that. I said I read one and five rather than one and three. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shut the fuck. I'm a social science major. This isn't what this is about, okay? The point is the Iowa caucus is coming up, okay? Look, there. Don't get complacent, folks. Remember, campaign for Sanders as though he was 10 points down. Shut up. Now, with that being said, here we are. Okay, so we're taking a look at the primaries. Now, I've got this article right here, see? And it says, DNC members discuss rules change to stop Sanders at convention. Let's take a look, all right? A small group of Democratic National Committee members has privately begun gauging support for a plan to potentially weaken Bernie Sanders' presidential campaign and head off a brokered convention. In conventions on the sidelines of a DNC and Executive Committee meeting and in telephone calls and texts in recent days, about a half dozen members have discussed the possibility of a policy reversal to ensure that so-called superdelegates can vote in the first ballot of the party's national convention. Such a move would increase the influence of DNC members, members of Congress, and other top party officials who must now wait until the second ballot to have their say if the convention is contested. Now, let me explain this. So, the Democratic primaries take place, right? We start uh, uh, rolling up all the votes. First, we have Iowa. Then we have New Hampshire. You know, Super Tuesday, which is on March 3rd, we get a fuck ton of delegates. Each of these votes, each of these states, contribute a given number of delegates who are supposed to follow in line with the votes of their states. They pledge themselves to the candidate who the people vote for most. Makes sense, correct? Nice. So, if at the end of the day, after all of the votes have been counted, that's a horrible looking cup. After all of the votes have been counted, if there is a person who gets more than 50% of the convention's votes, so after all the states are lined up, it's, uh, it's a few thousand Democratic, um, you know, um, uh, uh, primary um, delegates. If he gets more than 50%, that's it. He wins. Bernie wins. Or whoever is up there wins. However, and here's the issue, if nobody... How are we going to do this? Are we gonna here we'll do like a little we'll do like a little that we'll do a little do a little this yeah okay yeah okay there we go there we go we're doing it we're doing art here folks okay if however nobody meets the 50% threshold well I, I chose Rasta colors look at that I wasn't even trying to do that you know hey if nobody meets that, then we enter what is called a brokered convention. In a brokered convention, the delegates who voted here, who were previously bound to follow and along with and vote for the candidates who their state you know, voted for, the actual citizens in this democracy. They voted for that. The shape is drawn the wrong way. Here, if we're doing the first convention, you know, uh, they just go along with the state. But in the second one right here, we still need 50% of the vote. Who are these extra fucking votes coming from? All the delegates from the first convention are still over there. What where are they coming from? Well, this is what's called the superdelegates, folks. And this is where democracy stops happening, okay? This is where democracy ends, my friends. I'm very sorry. Uh, democracy is canceled, you see. Because when we are dealing with superdelegates, we are talking about a group of people who can influence the results of the second ballot 
the one that we arrive at, if the first ballot's conditions don't lead to somebody having at least 50% of the vote, without them having to be in any way, shape, or form beholden to the interests of the democracy. And the, the representatives who voted in the first um, ballot are now free to vote for people of their choosing in the second ballot. So long story short, you get a few thousand establishment Democrats together in a room. You know, who comes to be president? Well, if we're talking about the first ballot over here, it really basically does come down to what the Democratic voters are in favor of. Because the... Um, because the uh, um, the people who cast in their votes here are beholden to the interest of those who are um, who 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 actually voted in the states. But if nobody gets that fifty percent threshold, the super delegates come in, and all of the original delegates throw their fucking hands up in the air and they go, "Well, guess we're gonna vote for who I want to vote for now." And then they pick. Super delegates are establishment Dems who are very very likely to go against Bernie Sanders. Everyone knows this, which is why if you've been following any policy wonk types on the left, you'll hear that Bernie Sanders needs to get at least 50% of the delegates in the first ballot, because if he doesn't, he's then being subjected to the rules of the second ballot, with all of the delegates there, free to vote however they want, likely, mind you, in support of the establishment candidates that they have um, material interests aligned with. I'm so confused. Basically, Bernie Sanders needs to win 50% of the vote off of the state um, uh, um, primary elections because if he doesn't, it goes to a fucking stupid system that allows a bunch of unelected dipshits to choose who's going to be the president the Democrats put forward. That's it. So basically, we get democracy or we don't. That's literally how it is. I'm not exaggerating, mind you. I'm not exaggerating. Oh yeah, they're calling super delegates automatic delegates now, as in they automatically fuck you in the ass if you let them have any control over the political system. Okay? So the only reason why Bernie Sanders has any shot at all, in the slightest, is because he can maybe get 50% of the votes for the first ballot. If he succeeds in doing that, he avoids super delegates entirely, and the non-super delegates, the regular delegates, are beholden to the interests of the people. If the super delegates come in, things get a lot dicier. Which is why... In conversations on the sidelines of a DNC executive committee meeting and in telephone calls and texts the recent day, about a half dozen members have discussed the possibility of a policy reversal to ensure that so-called super delegates can vote on the first ballot at the party's national convention, meaning that these anti-democratic establishment Dems who are completely divorced from the interests of the voters would be able to weigh in. Now, this was reversed after 2016. How many states does he need? That's an excellent question. Uh, let's look up. 2020 Democratic primary primaries wikipedia give me the uh where's the breakdown state breakdown state breakdown nope these are the candidates state breakdown state delegates per state there we go ballotpedia this is always good here we go So here we have a lot of numbers. We have district delegate votes. Don't worry about these numbers. We have pledged delegates right here, this tiny little number. Let's zoom in a little probably. Let's zoom in a lot so you guys can see. We have total pledged delegates right here. And then we have unpledged delegates. Unpledged delegates are the super delegates. The unpledged delegates are the delegates who are completely unbeholden to the interests of the people there. So let's take a look.
let's talk best case scenarios here. So on February 3rd, we have Iowa. Iowa is coming up as a caucus. Um, Bernie is currently slanted. Did I say de did I say delegates? I said delegates. Jesus Christ, they sound similar. What do you want? Iowa is coming up in two days. That's the caucus. Democrats, you know, they're going to run that out. Um, for February 11th, we have New Hampshire. Um, New Hampshire is pretty much guaranteed to go for Bernie, uh, which is uh, which is you know obviously nice. This is a better website. I hate this website. Fuck you. Anyway, what we're mostly looking for um, uh, is the um, is is Super Tuesday, which is on March third. So we have Iowa, New Hampshire, and Nevada, South Carolina, and then we have Super Tuesday. Super Tuesday, March third, we get a fuck ton of states running in. Now, how many? Here we go. About 4,000 pledge delegates, which means that for the first ballot, you have to win 1,990. So let's see if we can come up with 1,190 pledge delegates. Well, the Iowa election only has like uh, 40 delegates. New Hampshire is 24. These both probably go to Sanders in all likelihood. Nevada, if I recall correctly, still polls pretty heavily in favor of Biden. Which is what I would say if the link decided to work. There we go, Jesus. Yeah. No, it should be noted, though, most recently, that the most recent poll that came out of Nevada didn't really affect Biden's, um, didn't really affect, uh, I'm sorry, didn't really affect Sanders' electability, but it did affect Biden's. Biden's plummeted a fair bit, uh, which is, you know, which is pretty sweet. Um, I, you do like to see it. Uh, South Carolina is, man, they're really not going to let me just open in the same tab, are they? South Carolina, wait, this is California. Jesus Christ, fine. I'm getting cucked over here. The fuck is the point of ad blockers? California is working currently in favor of Sanders by a pretty decent margin. South Carolina is still, yeah, leaning very, very heavily in favor of Biden. But California is leading for Sanders. Texas, I think, is, uh, yeah, still in favor of Biden. We don't have a fancy graph here, unfortunately. Bernie is going to struggle in the South. That is correct. Here we go. This is current projections. Current projections are, according to this, not favorable to um, Sanders. However, this is from, what is this from? Uh, where, where are they getting this data from? This is from compiled, uh, this is compiled data. Yeah, this suggests that Biden still takes out in front. But the thing is, and this is the good news, folks, and this is why this is so important. Everyone listen to me. Keep in mind, keep in mind the fact that most people haven't made up their minds yet when it comes to who they want to be the Democratic candidate. Iowa and New Hampshire are up first. Bernie is set to win both of those. If people who are other who don't like Trump but are otherwise not very engaged with the political process hear that the first two primary votes went towards Bernie Sanders, we're going to see some movement in that direction. I think this map is uncharitable towards Bernie, and I think that as Bernie is able to snowball some of the earlier states, including California for Super Tuesday, which is going to be huge, I think things are going to trend out more favorably towards him. But all of that only matters 
if we get an actual first ballot election and not one that is influenced by fucking superdelegates. Not one where the fucking DNC establishment blowhards can put their hands in the fucking cookie jar early and say like, hey, you know, sure, I mean, fine. Uh, Bernie Sanders probably has the best chance against Trump, you know, looking at the polls. However, also important to consider, um, the insurance companies will be mad at me if I let him win and I might not get as much money from them next year, you know? There is a shot. It's still slim, but there is a shot. But there is no shot if this goes through. Now, the good news for this is, very, very thankfully, super, super important the, uh, to be considered, um, is the fact that this is not like an actual measure that is being taken at this moment. This isn't like going to happen right now. It is, in fact probably a good thing that it just took a few dipshits considering it for this to make news. There's a lot of scrutiny that has been placed on the DNC right now. If the DNC were to jump out with this, it would probably lead to a, a, na a national disgrace. I mean, there would be riots. If they, if this is, because this would be an open and deliberate attempt to rig the election against Bernie Sandorinos, you know. The fact that a few dudes talking about this amongst one another is all it takes for the news, you know, sites to pick up on it and for people to get mad about it is probably good for us. Important to keep that in mind. Can we Europeans help you guys out? Yes. If you're European, you can still volunteer for Bernie Sanders. There's no reason why you can't. Just go to berniesanders.com slash call and you will get information where you can be trained to sign up to do phone banking. You can, I don't think you can donate, um, but you can, uh, yeah, no, you can, you can canvas. You can't donate, but you can canvas. Please do meddle in this election. Feel free. Do you get all delegates from a given state if you win the primary there? There's flexibility. Sometimes you get all of them. Usually it's proportional, but sometimes it, it, it isn't proportional. There were times back in the 2016 election, for example, that Bernie Sanders won a significant proportion of a state but didn't win it entirely, and then the entire state's delegates went to Hillary Clinton. It was a lot of fun back then. I, 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 fondly, I fondly reminisce over 2016. What a grand time, you know. It's going to get nasty. It is going to get nasty again, folks, though. Please, believe you me, it's going to get bad again. Now, there is one other thing that we have to cover, other big piece of news. And that's somebody that I haven't really talked about that much on this stream because, uh, because fuck him. But I think it's important to now. And that's Bloomberg. Speaking of the DNC, the DNC recently specifically changed the rules for allowing people into their next debate so that Bloomberg, who gave a third of a million dollars to the DNC, which is struggling financially, can jump on there. I cannot stress this to you guys enough. Not only is Bloomberg a piece of shit candidate, a cynical hack who is trying to leverage his enormous wealth uh, um, to, to, to try and win this presidency, not only is he a bad, bad man, not only is he cringe and not based in the slightest, not only is he an oligarch, but Allowing a precedent where hyper-wealthy hyper oligarchs can buy their way to 8% of the general primary vote is insane. This is one of the reasons why I'm such a big fan of Bernie Sanders. You know, because Bernie Sanders really does drive all of his power from the people. Bloomberg has astroturfed his entire campaign. He has spent a quarter of a billion dollars on this campaign. That's all it takes in this country. Nobody has a quarter of a billion dollars to be throwing. Bernie doesn't have a quarter billion to be th fucking throwing around on TV ads. The DNC doesn't have a quarter billion to be throwing around for their fucking advertising. Bloomberg does. It's all a fucking game to him. 
He's pro he's probably spending less money than he's making on the interest he has in his current money from his investments. It's a fucking game for him. He could just like, hey, have you ever, can you imagine a country? It's the most powerful country in the world. And all you have to do to have a legitimate shot at being president is to just have a lot of money. That's it. That's all it takes. The precedent here is incredibly dangerous. He got the, the DNC to change the rules for $300,000. I didn't realize that the DNC was such a cheap hoe. I didn't, I, I thought for, for you to break democracy, I would expect for you to have to give over at least a few million. But for 300,000, they changed the rules from, that's it, that's all it takes? Fuck me, dude, I'll save up. I'll keep streaming for a little bit. Maybe I can rig the next presidential election. Yeah, the DNC is completely broke. They'll take anything. They'll, they'll take it. You can walk up to the D. You can walk up to the DNC with with spare change that you have pulled out of your couch and 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 offer it over to to their fucking managers, and they'll be like, mm, <laughs> "Thank you very much, sir." And um, where would you like your podium to be in the eighth primary debate? You can you you like they're nothing. Like they're 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 whores. They're cheap. They're, they're you can just. Give them, with Bloomberg, I wouldn't get out of my fucking seat for less than $10 million. I bet he made him dance for it, too. I bet Bloomberg showed up to the DNC in person with his smartphone, and he held it up to them. And he had the fucking confirmation page open to for him to donate the, 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 what was it? The, what's the, what's the maximum that you can donate per... Yeah, 106,500. He, he had like the confirm screen up and there were three windows of it tabbed open. And he was like, all right, all right, dance. And they just did a little fucking jig for him. He pulled out six shooters. He was firing at their feet, you know? It's fucking disgusting, dude. But Pete, this shouldn't be possible. You shouldn't be allowed to do this. It's, it's, it's incredible to me. And it's dangerous too, because Bloomberg can stay in the race forever. Bloomberg can stay in the race for all time. That's a thing that he can do that other people can't. Kamala had to drop out. Beto O'Rourke had to drop out. Delaney, God bless him, had to drop out. Bloomberg doesn't have to drop out. He has infinite money. Anytime. I see this in YouTube ads now. Whenever my fucking ad uh, blocker decides to fucking spite me and malfunction, I see Bloomberg ads. They're six seconds long. They're, just, they're all so folksy and stupid. Oh, uh, you you ever um you ever see Trump pet a dog? Bloomberg will pet a dog. You know why? He gets things done. Da -dum -dum. Like that's it. Yeah, Hulu, Netflix. It's the whole media space has been overcome by astroturfing Bloomberg campaign. And the dude's a robot. Have you seen him try to pet a fucking dog? Have you seen this? Just give me the fucking video, you stupid piece of shit. It's not that Mike Bloomberg doesn't know how to shake hands off with a nice tickle, but still. Oh, sure. He I don't need the fucking commentary. Nice tickle, but still. Ay, ay, ay. Holy shit. Who the. F he thought it was Bernie. This is CNN? Ay, ay, ay. Holy shit. Shut up. Just give me the fucking video. of the NRA, not one bit. Trust me. I just want, by the way, the, the overwhelming cynicism uh, is Bloomberg, Bloomberg is like a horrible person to work for. So this folksy, like, it's, it's dogs talking. Four jobs. Mike's not afraid of the NRA, not one bit. Trust me, Mike will get it done, yeah. <laughs> get it yes. done, yes. He does not tweet. Uh, like, uh, he doesn't tweet? I, 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 I. 
Yeah, this is animal abuse. Forcing animals to be in the in the in the presence of this is it's just it's too it's it's just too it's just too much. Oh, I like Mike. I like Mike. I lick Mike. Uh, so we have that. And then, and then we get, th this is, this is, this is maybe the best juxtaposition I've ever seen. This is, this, this is salient. You can almost hear like the, what's, what's the, 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 the show? Dun, 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 You know that, that little jingle? He's a fucking robot! He, his, his synapse, he's never seen a dog before in his fucking life. He, he just sees, he's just like his, his, his fucking soup businessman brain just sees a, 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 an entity and reaches out to handshake. I, he, he look he commits he commits to it too look the dog weird champs him when he's done look at that look the dog's like all right okay we're done I I got I I, I it's crazy to me this this dude Bloomberg is a fucking robot he's there's there's something missing I, I don't understand how do you how, how do you shake it it's like can you imagine like someone said like imagine if you have Bloomberg over, okay? You have Bloomberg over, and and you like talking. You're at a table or whatever. You're discussing business. You're talking about how you like like to rape children or whatever, because you know billionaires. You know how it is. And and Bloomberg sitting there, and then your cat jumps up at the table, a table, and you like rub the back of the cat's head, and Bloomberg like grabs the cat by the throat with both hands, and then gives it like a gives it like a. Like a sh like a like a like a, a throttle, and then like pats it on the head, and like sends it on its way, and the, yeah, the shake the shake weight technique, you know. And to him, this is totally normal. You just you're looking, and you're like, and you're like, oh shit, wait, do I tell? Wait, does he know? What have I been disrespected in some way? Oh yeah, the uh, uh the ice cream. Uh, mm, big gay ice cream is the best. Where's my ice cream? Mmm. <gasps> Big gay ice cream is the best. Now, I admit that if that was a if that was a Bernie ad, I think he would have I think he would have sold that. You know what I mean? If that was Bernie, he would have sold it. He would have he would have given the camera guy like a look. He would be like, "Uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. That's that's it's very yeah, very gay. Yeah, very gay. Yeah, and give like a smile or something. He would have sold it. All it takes is somebody with a human soul. Look at look at his eyes. Is this somebody who truly believe? Does this person truly believe that big gay is the best? Does he really believe that? Or is he lying to you right now? I think, I don't, I think he's lying. I don't think he thinks Big Gay is good at all. I don't think he thinks anything about it. My Blo Bloomberg, you know, the, the king of the stop and frisk. Um, the, the king oligarch buying his way into this election. He's a legitimate threat because he will never drop out. He will never drop out. Because he, he doesn't have to, because he's infinite money. Why would he ever drop out? And personally, I think it's disgusting that we live in a country where the overwhelming popular support of Bernie Sanders and all the money it has generated, more donations than any other, can than any other candidate in history of this country, can be outpaced by a factor of five because some billionaire just decided... Hmm? You know, um, you know, my son said, you know, why not? President. Yeah. We'll give it a shot.
Anyway, that conclude that concludes Bernie Watch. Uh, uh, that concludes Bernie Watch, the first of February, two thousand twenty.